I've had friends die in my arms. I've watched people go to prison for life because they couldn't not have this drug that the drug companies know is so addicting. People are dying because of it and I almost lost my life because of it. This is the worst man-made epidemic in the history of American medicine. When we talk about opioid painkillers, we are essentially talking about heroin pills. There's not a, a city in the United States right now that doesn't have a major opiate addiction problem. It was right before my 12th birthday. I was just handed pills, didn't know I was so young. I, I tell people it, it made me feel like Superman. I could do anything. I was addicted when I took my very first pill and uh, it changed my life. We have entire communities that don't have parent-teacher days anymore because the parents are either incarcerated, away at a rehab, or dead. Chances are you or someone you know has been touched by the opioid epidemic. How did this happen? People always say, follow the money. There's considerable amount of money uh, involved in the, in the prescribing of opiates. Big Pharma is one of the most powerful lobby groups in Washington. But FDA policies have led us astray including painkillers marketed to children. Individuals will take those prescription opioids, um, become addicted, it becomes too expensive. And heroin walked into town. And it's cheap, really inexpensive, readily available. And I started using heroin when I was about to turn 14. I am a uh, heroin addict, and uh, my life became unmanageable. I end up homeless. I end up living in a car. I was uh, let go from uh, a, a pretty nice private practice. Stolen money, pawned jewelry of family members, um, lied, lied, lied. A quarter million dollars in debt. Uh, I've been hospitalized, overdosed. Um, I've had osteomyelitis, almost lost my arm. I was in a coma for four days. When I woke up, I was hospitalized for a few weeks because I damaged artery in my heart. and. Um, at that time, I still didn't want to get help. I recently got in trouble with uh, the feds, and um, they, they came to my house and they took my kids. In the month of June, we turned 400 men away from our detox unit. We are just completely overwhelmed. Probably less than 10% of the people who need treatment are actually able to access treatment. People are dying from their addiction while they're sitting on the waiting list. Sadly, we are not seeing the light at the end of the, the tunnel, so we have to continue working. We have to continue just making lots of noise. And I've often said to people, uh, uh, we're gonna be in your face. We're gonna continue to be in your face. Within our nation, a flame has been lit to hold the guilty accountable, demand stricter laws, secure better access to treatment and deliver solutions to end this plague. It's very clear when one looks at the overprescribing of opioids that's led to this public health crisis that the medical community really forgot the first rule, which is do no harm. Do no harm, an oath shattered by the opioid epidemic.